Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share with you guys a birthday card that I made for my dad's 86th birthday, which is coming right around the corner. And I decided to use this adorable Stampendous Dog Kisses stamp set, which I got from lovecrafts.com. And if you're interested by any chance in making a purchase at Lovecrafts, please check out the description box below for a coupon code for 20% off your purchase for the next three weeks. These cute little puppies are from the Dog Kisses stamp set, and I decided to just line them up in a row and then doodle on a kind of rustic wooden fence underneath them. And I stamped out the little puppies with VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and then I'm using a pit pen, an artist pit pen, uh, to doodle on this rustic fence and you can see it's super easy um by the way i also kind of masked off a little bit of that yorkshire terrier because i didn't want the bow in the little dog uh, fur so i masked that off with a little uh, washi tape and then took it off after i inked up the stamps and now you see me doodling with that pit pen to add the fur that's kind of missing the little blank area there. And now I've decided to watercolor. This is, by the way, on Strathmore watercolor paper. Um, and I'm using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers and a Pentel water brush. So I've decided to color up this center dog, just like my Babalu. I'm giving it black ears. I'm actually using a dark gray and then blending it out with my water brush. And I'm also coloring up the little black spots. This image surprisingly looks so much like my Babalu. I'm using black for around the eyes and around the nose. And I'm actually not gonna blend that part out. I'm just gonna leave it full strength. And now I'm using the light gray to put in some shadows on the white area fur. And I'm blending that out again with that water brush you see that I'm gonna add another layer. The first layer of the dark gray has kind of mellowed out as it dried, and I'm using the black again to add some more depth and uh, texture where the ears and the spots are. And then I decided I'm gonna wait until that dries and color up the tongues of all of the puppies. Uh, if you recall, the stamp set is called Dog Kisses, so, you know, all their tongues are hanging out. And not to make all the tongues the exact same color, I'm using two different reds. One is a wine red and the other, I believe, is geranium. And I'm just blending that out, leaving a little bit of the white area where that tongue lolls over the edge of the bulldog's mouth. And I'm using the dark gray again for the shadowed areas and blending that out too. So inside, deep in the mouth, it's a little bit darker and where it's out fully out outside the dog's mouth it's a little bit lighter and now since i'm confident that the doodled in fence uh, is dry enough for me to add water to it that's the one great thing about these pit pens um, they are water safe so they're great for water coloring and um, now i'm adding some dark brown i believe and blending that out with the water brush. And I'm adding a kind of a mid-tone. If you're interested in the particular colors that I use of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, you can check out all of those listings on my accompanying blog post, which is also linked in the description box below. I'm gonna add, I think, like three or four different colors for this wooden fence. Uh, I could have left it really lighter like it is now and kind of do a half painted look, but I wanted to add real depth of color for a kind of a grounding or a foundation for all these pups to be popping over to say happy birthday to my dad. And you can tell this is really, really forgiving. The uh, water paper, watercolor paper from Strathmore is really resilient, so it doesn't pill very much. And I can just add layers and layers and kind of blend with that water brush and get a lot of depth of color. Um, and I did the second half of that fence off camera. And now I'm going to add a little bit more of a spot around this little puppy's right eye because that's how my Babalu is colored. 
And then I decided to add even the tear staining that he gets under his eyes. And you can see I'm dabbing away the extra wetness uh, as I blend away some of the darker color with a tissue. For this puppy, I've decided to color him up like a golden retriever. That was my sister's first dog, um, and I thought it would be nice to kind of commemorate all the dogs in our family um, to the extent that I could with this stamp set. And so this dog is colored up like our golden, and I'm just using some beige and some yellow, if you can believe it. It looks really bright here, but as you can see in a minute, as you blend it out with a water brush, it will really soften, especially after it dries a little bit. And you can see my tissue paper here that I'm dabbing my water brush on so that I don't drag too much of the beige into the yellow or vice versa. I wanted the tops of the dog's muzzle, head, ears, especially toward the right side, which is where I am imagining the light source coming from the right uh, and the front. Uh, and then I'm going back in and reestablishing some of the golden color with this beige. And I'm adding that second layer just so that I can get some richness of color back into the puppy. And I'm blending out with that water brush again. It's really handy to use a water brush, for me anyway, rather than a paintbrush and a little cup of water, just because I feel like it's easier, kind of more streamlined to do it this way. I don't have to keep dabbing back into a water uh, cup. Now I decided I was adding a bulldog because in Atlanta, the UGA uh, call university, uh, the mascot is a bulldog and it's, they're super popular dogs in Georgia all, or all around. So I've decided to color up this guy like he's got some brown spots, uh, one brown spot on one side of his face, and then I'm blending out again. The rest, I'm going to try and keep more white and a little bit of dark brown just to get the shadows in. Um, and I think this came out really actually quite realistic. Around his muzzle, right by his mouth, I'm using a dark brown. And then I'm also going to use a dark gray just to add to those wrinkles and really emphasize them. And it looks a little scary now where I'm adding the dark brown around the eye, but really those wrinkles need to be emphasized to look more realistic. So I'm going to go ahead and emphasize those areas and then blend out with that water brush just a tiny bit. I want to make sure that the white areas stay more or less white. You can see me dabbing up excess ink there with that tissue as I blend. And on the uh, side that has the brown patch around the eye, I'm also blending and dabbing back and forth so that I can keep the white area of the dog looking more white while blending out where I think there will be shadows. And around the mouth, some bulldogs have a pinky tone right around their white areas, so I thought I would add that. Um, and I think it came out looking pretty realistic there. And I'm just blending out with a soft uh, gray. And now I decided to re-emphasize with a brown over the beige color just to add a more realistic brown color for this bulldog along the edges, outside edges, where you can see the dog through the gaps in the fence. Um, and now for the black lab, uh, you're gonna be surprised I'm using a light blue to establish where I think the highlights will be. So particularly on the top of the muzzle, on the front edge of the left ear, on the top and the right of the right ear, on the kind of top sides of all of those, you know, wrinkles of flesh. And then now I'm going in to establish the darker black areas. I'm actually using a dark gray here because I want to make sure that I, I, I want to make sure that it looks black, like a black dog, but I don't want it to be like a black pit, a black hole. So I'm establishing all the dark areas with this dark gray. And then when I blend it out, it will lighten up quite a bit. Underneath the uh, the tongue, between the two front paws, you're gonna see a darker area. And again, I'm gonna go back in and emphasize with a black, but I wanted to first establish, you know, make sure I have the shading areas correct where I think the darker areas are gonna be, just trying it out with that dark gray around the eyes, on the where the muzzle meets the front of the face, between the two front paws, um, on the left ear, especially on the left side of that left ear, and uh, 
again, just blending out. And at this point, you might think, oh, it looks almost more like a Weimaraner than a black lab. But here you see me going back in and emphasizing those black areas with the black Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker. And this stark contrast, don't worry, it's going to blend right in once you use that water brush again. Um, and so I'm just reestablishing all those darkest areas with this black, um, especially like in the gap between the fence where there are going to be cast shadows underneath the ears, under the tongue, under the head. Um, and then I'm blending out with this water brush. And at this point, I'm thinking, oh, some areas are looking too much like a black hole, but I'm not worried about it. I, I know I can dab up. <laughs> See, every time you dab, when you re-wet the area with the water brush, you'll be able to lift off some of that uh, ink so that you can lighten up quite a bit. You can't make it white, of course, but you can lighten up an image quite a bit after you've put a dark color down when you use watercolors. It's a super forgiving medium, in my opinion, and you can see me going back over layer after layer. Now remember, that's only possible because this paper is so resilient. I'm going back in, reestablishing those highlights with the blue, and then I'm gonna go back in and blend a little bit. Um, but I think on this dog, I must have gone back and forth and dabbed up a lot of ink, probably at least half a dozen times, if not more, to really you know, play with how dark I want this dog to look. I want it to really look like a true black lab, and I think I'm able to establish that. And because the whites of the eyes kind of faded out, I'm using a white gel pen to reestablish those highlights in those eyes. Now this last puppy I'm coloring up like my Bandito. Even though it's supposed to be a Yorkshire Terrier, I thought of all of the dog images, this looked closest to my Bandito, especially without that little bow on his head. And uh, if the ears had been more floppy down, it would have been a perfect fit, I think. But maybe I'll do some more masking the next time I uh, ink up this stamp. But I'm using three different colors of browns and beiges to get the brown spots around his eyes and ears and blending out with that water brush. And I think it makes it look really fluffy and textured to use the three different colors and make sure the ends are kind of almost like a pale yellow. And then for the white areas, I'm using a light gray again, just so that it's not just like the color of the card base. Um, and I'm using that light gray and then blending out so that the white areas have a little bit of dimension as well. And off camera, I'm going to color in the background just with the light blue, but I wanted to show you the main part of this water coloring, and then I will share with you guys the completed card, which I kept it really simple. It's a one-layer card, and uh, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget, if you're going to make a purchase at lovecrafts.com, don't forget to use my coupon code crafty pause 20 all caps when you're doing your checkout and uh, i hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching